First and only on four, a Valley woman is featured in a documentary about stolen education. She was instrumental in stopping segregation within her school district as a child. Tonight, she and her nephew are sharing the story. It hurts you for the rest of your life. There are scars behind Carmen Galbraith's smile. Even though the Brownsville woman has a lot to be thankful for, a healthy family and successful career in the Valley, there's a childhood memory that continues to haunt her. They would uh, spank us in her hands and uh, make us stand next to the boards for half a day or whatever. If you spoke Spanish. Uh -huh. Carmen recalls horrible memories of attending elementary school in the small town of Driscoll. She was among several other students who were moved from the Mexican-only school and integrated with the white population. Once there, she says Mexican students were forced to stay in first grade for longer than just a year, including her two sisters. My first one was detained three years. My second one was detained two years. And why would they detain them? Because they didn't speak English. And the whole class was detained, not because of their grades. It was just because they were non-speaking, not English speaking. Driscoll Elementary is located right here, a little bit more than 100 miles from the valley. It is in these same exact calls that children remember years of what they consider torture, being held back in first grade solely because of their ethnicity. It was 1957, but Carmen remembers it like yesterday. The embarrassment she endured if she dared speak Spanish in class. But even though she was only seven years old, she knew she had to speak out in order to save herself from being in the same position as her older sisters being held back in the first grade. She testified as part of a federal civil rights lawsuit against Driscoll ISD. They kept asking me questions that how come they were all in the same grade? You know, and I kept telling them that they were detained. And they said, why? And I told them why. In this case, they put the children on the stand. The district was saying the only reason we're doing that is because they only know how to speak Spanish. And so they put the, the lawyers put the children on the stand to prove that they could speak English. Carmen's nephew, Enrique Aleman Jr., didn't know what his mom and aunts had suffered until after the death of his mother 10 years ago. He has since made it his mission to tell their story with a documentary, including several of the students who were kept from advancing in grade level. His mother, Lupe, Carmen's sister, took the brunt of the oppression. She was in lower first grade, then low first and high first. Her formidable years in elementary school stolen. Lupe didn't graduate high school until she was 20 years old. Many of the children involved never spoke publicly about it until now. What the documentary is trying to do is to value, validate that history and to say that's something that can be empowering for people to know and uh, to do it in a way that's valuing the, the history that's in our own community. This is the first screening of the documentary in South Texas. The audience in Corpus Christi astounded by the treatment of the students, except for those in attendance who actually lived through it. I, th I think it was meant to, to discourage uh, from very early on, and they really didn't agree with the Brown versus Board of Education case, which, which, may, which made them close the Mexican school and integrate. So if they were forced to integrate, they just segregated within the school. Several South Texas educators are interested in sharing the film with their students. Some of the similar issues with access to bilingual education, some of the similar issues related to some teachers don't have high expectations of, of our kids, um, that I think people can relate to it. It was a time painful to remember, but Carmen and the others who as children stood up against an entire school district are now proud to tell their story of sacrifice and resilience. Feelings we went back. by the school and I got real teary-eyed. You keep on going. You don't let those things bother you so much. And, I mean, now that we're older. Yeah. But did it take a long time? Oh, for you to get yes, that definitely. Not being embarrassed a and long time. Well, there were eight families, including Carmen's, that filed a lawsuit. The screening, the screening that is, we attended was the only one in South Texas, but the director hopes to bring it down here to the Valley. He's also submitting it to film festivals and previewing it at different universities across the country. I posted a preview of the story on my Facebook page. People are already commenting about their experiences with segregation and discrimination, even right here in the Valley. Chat with me online right now at facebook.com slash action4newsmarcy and on Twitter at Marcy KGBT.